connector pins or terminals. As you can see, for example, for this connector, we have here a bended pin. This bended pin can make a short circuit in the motherboard. So you see, check whether you have a good power jack or not. Of course, if you have a power jack with cable, you should check also the cables and the connector to the motherboard. The next part that can cause a failed laptop motherboard is the protection diode, as you can see here. You will find always this kind of diode near to the power jack. Always this diode is connected to the ground in its anode and as you can see here we have this line, this white color, this is the cathode. It is always connected to the power rail, to the 19 volt or 20 volt power rail. Here we have switches, two switches for this motherboard. Okay, you should also check the serviceability of these two switches in the motherboard. The next part that can cause a failed laptop motherboard is the random access memory. So if you have a bad chip, you can get a failed laptop motherboard. That's why you should always check the RAM. You can, of course, change the slot. You can clean the RAM. Be sure that the RAM is connected or inserted correctly to its slot. The next part that can cause a failed laptop motherboard is the CPU or the processor, central processing unit. So you should always check the serviceability of the CPU. Is it installed correctly or not? Is it broken or not? Of course, beside of the CPU, you should also check the CPU circuit, where we can find some inductors or coils and MOSFETs, as you can see. These four ICs are MOSFETs, 8-pin MOSFETs. So, always you should check the serviceability of MOSFETs and all ICs. For example, here we have a bad IC, as you can see. That's why, always, when you want to diagnose in a motherboard, you should do first a visual inspection. Because using just a visual inspection, you can find out the problem. The next part that can cause a failed laptop motherboard is the north bridge or the GMC hedge. Here, this is the north bridge. Around it, we have many ceramic capacitors or PF capacitors. This is the back of the north bridge. We have also many filtering ceramic capacitors. All these capacitors are filtering capacitors for the north bridge. Okay, so any shorted capacitor here automatically means the north bridge is shorted, is failed. To repair the problem of the graphic card, the solder, as you can see, this is the solder under the graphic card. If there is any dry or a bad soldering, the graphic card cannot be operated correctly. So, you can just use the hot air gun and then you will solve the problem. Okay? Of course, you should use the hot air gun with the flux or the soldering paste. As you can see here, this is the soldering paste. You should make a little bit of a soldering paste around the graphic card and then use the hot air gun, okay, in order to warm up the graphic card and you will solve the problem. Next, we have the ICH or the suit bridge. As you can see, its model is Intel suit bridge. Here, we have always will find a crystal or a quartz near to it. As you can see, this is a quartz. So, the suit bridge is the responsible for all connectors in the motherboard. So the third bridge controls all ports and connectors in the motherboard, including hard disk drive port, USB port, RG45 port, etc. Here basically we have in the back of the third bridge, we have of course ceramic capacitors. Always we find ceramic filtering capacitors 
near to the chipsets. Okay, the same work in principle. Any shorted capacitor in the back or around the circuit bridge means automatically bad chipset. Next part that can cause a failed laptop motherboard is the super I/O or super input output IC, as you can see. Basically, this IC is the responsible for the whole power in the motherboard. Of course, we fire the crystal also near to it and near to the BIOS. Okay, so you should also check this IC. Is it good or not? Is it broken or burned or not? And also check all its pins. And here we have the BIOS, the basic input output system, one of the most important but that can cause a failed laptop motherboard. Of course, the BIOS contains a program or a software inside it. If the software is corrupted, the laptop will stop working. So the pin number 8, as you can see here, always holds 3.3 volt. When you power the motherboard, without pressing the power button, you should measure 3.3 volt in the pin number 8 of the BIOS or basic input output system. So, the other faults that you can get in the motherboard is the CMOS battery fault. Okay, sometimes I find in some laptops when there is a bad CMOS battery, okay, this can cause a no power motherboard. That's why you should always check the CMOS battery. Okay, the CMOS battery you should find 3.3 volts between its terminals. Okay. Pay attention to connectors, especially USB connectors, because if the USB connector is damaged, if there is any bended or damaged pins, automatically means a short circuit in the motherboard. Okay, that's why you should always check the serviceability of USB connectors. Of course, all connectors, but especially USB connectors. So. I will give you an example. For example, here we have a connector with three pins. So basically, this is a good connector. Okay, we have here three pins. Here we have another connector where we will draw a banded pin, as you can see. So you have basically three pins, but the third pin is banded. Here we have a short circuit, basically. So, for example, this, the third pin is VCC and the second one is the ground here, we have a short circuit, okay? So, you should always pay attention to bended pins in every motherboard. So, basically, this is one of the cam faults in the laptop motherboards and even computer motherboard, okay? As you know, the USB connectors composed of four pins okay basically usb connectors or any motherboard ports okay you should apply this rule so the usb connector contain four pins basically so let's draw a usb connector right here as you can see so let's draw the fourth connector or four pins as you can see so basically the pin in the right is for VCC, okay, as you can see, okay, here we have VCC and basically for USB, we have 5 volt, always in the right pin of the USB connector, we have 5 volt, so the pin in the left is connected to the ground, as you can see, and here in the middle, we have two pins, so the pin next to the VCC is minus D and the pin next to the ground is plus D. Here, these two pins are for data. If you want to transfer, for example, files between USB and the motherboard, these two pins are responsible for transferring information. So, if you have any banded pin here, you will get a short circuit and then the motherboard will be failed. Of course, the same for other connectors. For example, RG45 connectors, as you can see, we have here eight pins. If there is any bended pins or two pins touched together, you will get a short circuit in the motherboard. 
especially in the ICH and, and then the motherboard will be failed. So of course you can check other compound including control ICs, MOSFETs, tantalum capacitors, the clock generator IC as you can see check all pins of clock generator IC that generate the timing and the clock for the whole motherboard for the synchronization this is a very important IC without this IC the motherboard will not work properly and also one of the most important ICs is the audio control IC this is basically the IC that controls these ports these jacks over here if this IC is failed, these ports will not work properly. So that's why you should also check this IC. If this IC get very hot, means automatically is bad. And of course, here we have some ceramic capacitors that you can check. If if any of these capacitors are shorted, means automatically the IC also is shorted.